I'm traveling through South Dakota right now, and I'm trying to find the proper words to describe the place that I'm at. And all I can think to say is that if you go to England, you see palaces. And if you go to Germany, you see castles and palaces. But there's only one place in the world where you can go and see a palace that is made of corn. And it's right here in Mitchell, South Dakota. The world's only corn palace. And where is it at? Oh, that's right. The USA. For those of you who live outside of the United States, I'm not even kidding. We have a palace made of corn. So as you can see, uh, this is decorated. This is the uh, what will be the Crazy Horse Monument right here. And a <laughs> picture of the Corn Palace made out of corn. So the theme this year is South Dakota homegrown. And they change this out every single year. And believe it or not, there is a history behind these corn palaces. But this is the only one. We're going to go inside and take a quick look. Now, before we go in, I do want to show something. We're going to zoom in on, on Crazy Horse here and get a little bit closer look at all of the individual ears of corn that are used to make these murals. So it's kind of cool folk art that, that all tells a story. And they use 275,000 ears of corn every year to make a brand new mural. And then they also use corn stalks and uh, rye and different agricultural products. So once you're here, honestly, it really is impressive. Here's the thing showing really how <laughs> they make these big murals out of corn. So they start off putting this black paper up and having a sketch tells what colors uh, need to go up in each place. So this one, like if they were going to put up a duck mural, this is what it would look like. And then this would be the finished product. Now, so far I've only showed the front of the Corn Palace, but this entire side is also covered in corn murals. Again, talking about the history and culture of South Dakota. And again, this gets changed out every year. A little bull rider there. Fun fact, I actually used to do that and broke my arm in the process. Hey, looky there. More history told through the medium of corn. McGovern and his run for president in 1972. We just walked inside the corn palace here and they have a few displays. Uh, here's one showing some American Indian items that have to do with corn. And uh, this is a, a big deal in this area and every year I guess they have a contest of uh, making shoes with corn or decorating shoes with corn. So here, here was the, uh, the winner of that one. Now I'm not sure if these are originals or replicas. Uh, but these are at least depicting different tools of the Native Americans. So you can see you know, this item here, like a, a rake of sorts made out of elk horn. Here's a hoe that is made out of uh, the scapula, I'm going to say of a bison maybe, or something like that. Yeah. Now here inside the Corn Palace they have these different panels of information that talk about the history of the corn palaces and I didn't know this but there were quite a few of these back in the late 1800s. The first one was in 1887. It started whenever a tribe of local Winnebago Indians 
uh, sold some colorful varieties of corn to uh, some palace builders in Sioux City and I guess it was it just exploded it was like called the eighth wonder of the world Grover Cleveland uh, who was president at the time visited um, and yeah said that it was really something they had 130,000 people visit in a week's time so here you can see some pictures this is from a corn palace in 1891 Here's one from 1892. Yeah, that is that is really crazy. Huh, didn't know that was such a big thing. So this is the main room inside of the corn palace and there's more corn in here and this is actually kind of cool this is where like folk art and history collide together so they're taking all of these ears of corn and really telling the story of South Dakota or at least a part of it so including you know buffalo Native Americans, white settlers, just including all of these different elements of the uh, rich history of South Dakota. And then this room right here, you can see the seats is kind of a multi-purpose room. They do sporting events here and uh, also um, craft shows and all kinds of different things like that. But telling a story at the same time. Interesting getting ready to look at uh, really kind of a, a gallery of what the corn palaces looked like through the years and this one in particular is 1892 and all of these pictures down here show the evolution of the corn palace uh, I'm not going to show all of these but there are a few that I want to point out uh, this one in particular is from 1918 this is the year that World War One ended. Here's another one that is kind of interesting, at least to me. This is from 1942. So there's only a few years where the Corn Palace did not have corn on it. So you can see in this one, no corn cobs. They've got rye and corn stalks, uh, but there's no corn because they needed that for the war effort. This was during World War II. And it would be kind of wasteful to take food that you could eat and put it up on a corn palace. So this is showing some artist renderings of the designs of the corn palace in the past. So this one would have been from 1969. And you can see there's some grid lines in there to help kind of guide the actual creation of the finished product. And man, this one seems kind of dark. Like a nuclear holocaust as depicted through corn. All right, well, we originally were just going to stop here for the heck of it, but that ended up being pretty cool. So, Britain, you may have Buckingham Palace. Germany, you might have Neuschwanstein Castle. But one thing that you'll never have is a corn palace, because this is the only one in the world. Now, I'm seeing a lot of cars in this parking lot, so the restaurant must be good. But man, what an unfortunate time to have a place named Corona Village Mexican Restaurant. <laughs>